on June 8, 793. No one living in England knew that it was the last day of summer. The time of the barbarian kingdoms was coming to an end. The sails of the Scandinavian ships that sail from the far east appeared far on the horizon, bringing with them centuries of war, carnage, and plunder. The Vikings came whenever and wherever they wanted, taking what they needed, killing hundreds and thousands of the finest warriors in Europe and England, easily smashing the armies and retinue of kings and local thanes, and there was no force that could stand against them. The warlike prowess of the ringed northern bandits was unmatched and could only be compared to their courage, and the best warriors fled beyond the walls of the fortresses, following the peasants only when they saw the striped sails of the drakkers. What if I told you that it wasn't exactly like that, that the image of the Vikings that modern mass culture draws for us has almost nothing in common with the real Vikings that in three centuries the Vikings lost far more battles than they won. Let's look into it. We begin by trying to understand who the Vikings actually were. And these most fierce and all-bearded people were not a people, not a nation, and not even an alliance of some local tribes, but only a profession. Well, to be perfectly precise, a social condition of individuals who lived in Scandinavia and its surrounding lands. In general, Scandinavia by the end of the 7th century was not very different from the rest of Europe. The same people, the same tribes and tribal unions in general. Even the local languages were similar to those of other Germanic tribes. However, it had one crucial feature, the climate. Even against the backdrop of an early medieval cold snap, which caused snow to fall in Europe even in the summer months, Scandinavia could surprise anyone. There was a thin strip of land suitable for life and agriculture along the western and southern coasts of the peninsula. The rest of the land was occupied by mountains and foothills that were not very friendly to people, and while it was possible to live there, farming was almost unrealistic. Therefore, since the time of the early Germanic tribes, locals and outsiders alike have fought over the very scarce resources of this land with an enthusiasm worthy of better application. Of course you can condemn them for this, but when you are faced with the full issue of survival, and not only you, but your whole race, no measures are excessive. That's how it turned out that the future Vikings were plundering, first the nearest neighbors, and then uniting with them the neighbors further away, long before it became mainstream. Obviously, not everyone or even most of the people living in those lands went on the raids. These people were a very small minority, and they were usually poor, so they were willing to take risks, moderately marginalized, because there was nothing wrong with revenge for murdered relatives back then, and most often landless, which means they did not bother about the season and the harvest. And this is perfectly natural, ordinary farmers, as well as hunters and other craftsmen whose profession allows them to exist without risking their lives or the lives of their kin, are unlikely to break away and rush to raid their neighbors in the ghostly hope of finding among their poor belongings, something valuable for which they can risk their lives. However, Time passed, and by the beginning of 8th century, all who lived more or less close to the lands of Scandinavia were robbed, and not just once, 
And again the question arose, what next? And there was only one answer, to go further out to sea. The first attempts at Viking raids were, to be honest, not very successful. The very small bands of Scandinavian raiders could hardly, if at all, cope with the local clan. Militia, not to mention the small bands of local landlords. So very soon, the Scandinavian military elite got involved in solving this problem. The same one that had recently chased these very robbers away from their fjords. And now that their charges had switched from their Scandinavian neighbors to other nations, was left sort of out of the picture, and after that the process began. The units formed around a small, more or less professional squadron were no match for the local militia, and the tiny squads of small landowners, and even a single ship, usually carrying only 20 to 30 men, was more than a serious threat to any coastal village simply because it always appeared suddenly. Even if there was a Ferdian militia in the village, it never had time to militia and arm loners. Two dozen thugs were easily cut to ribbons. It was just as easy to take out half a dozen vigilantes that the local landowner had time to round up. This was followed by a thorough looting of everything the raiders could reach and a quick getaway until the local ruler arrived on the scene with a serious force. That's how or so it worked. They sailed in, assessed the forces, and if they were insignificant, the massacre and looting. If there was even the slightest chance of getting hit back, it was. We were just passing through.